Hello and welcome back to Node Explorer. I'm Michael and today's topic is about the AI move to node and similar, similar nodes. So first create a blueprint class, a character and then we will name it AI BP. Go to the event graph and right click onto the graph and type in AI move to. Now, first things first, if you want to utilize the functionality of the AI move to node, you need a character movement component and you need a navigation mesh. You can find it by going into this left panel here and then type in nav mesh. Just drag the nav mesh bounce volume into the scene and scale it up and scale it up as big as you want it uh, to be traversable by the AI. Uh, please excuse my dog. He's again very noisy today. Um, yeah. And if we want to visualize um, our box here, we press the P key on the keyboard. This will give us this green color and these gray areas. So what are these doing? Well, the navigation mesh does basically two things. It's, it marks the locations um, which we can't um, move to and it gives us um, information about what we need to avoid and what not. So these gray, gray areas can't be traversed for every AI. So they will be unable to move towards or to the uh, gray marked location. All things which are green can be traversed uh, with an AI and they can get to every green location. So that's a neat feature. So now we go back to the AI blueprint and we created now a navigation mesh and we have a character movement component. Perfect. Now we can use this node. Um, the first thing is an exec input execution pin. And that means this will activate the AI move to node. So we will kickstart it with an event, event begin play node and put it in into the input execution node. Now the next thing or the next pin we will um, ex uh, we will see is the pawn uh, pin. It just says pawn reference. Well, this option here actually tells our AI move to node what pawn or which object we want to apply this functionality on. So because we want to use it, utilize our blueprint here or our character AI blueprint here, we just drag out from the blue pawn, print, uh, pawn pin and type in get a reference to self or just self. This will reference this the pawn to our pawn here, or our blueprint, and tell our blueprint that our uh, AI move to wants to use this blueprint here. You can also use a different pawn, but yeah. The next thing is the destination pin. The destination will tell our AI move to node where you want to move towards or where does the AI need to move to. So that's our goal location and let's take our get player character. So we will take our uh, player character as an example and well, get actor location. We want to get the actor location in a vector format. We can plug it now into the destination. 
and our AI move to will go towards our player character and will try to reach our actor location. Wonderful. The next thing does exactly the same thing, just that it doesn't use a vector, but the object itself. So if we want to use the get player character and the goal is the get player character, we can plug this into the target actor and it will move towards the specified actor. You can also use any other object which is an actor and it will basically move um, to this location. So it just does the same here, just that you input here an object variable or an actor variable instead of a vector. Okay, and basically here is a green pin called acceptance radius. Well, this basically means how close should our AI go towards the player? Zero means it will basically kiss you and hug you with you. But I don't think you want that. So it will try to go to your location, but it will probably collide with you all the time. An accept radius of 100 or 200 or higher will uh, make the AI move to stop if it, uh, if it reaches the acceptance radius. So the acceptance radius is not being applied on the AI itself. It's being calculated from the actor, which is actually the goal. So mm, try to imagine you have an, a sphere or a sphere-like collision box, uh, a, a sphere-like collision uh, around your player character or around your object you want to move towards. Now the acceptance radius basically will increase this imaginary sphere. And the bigger it is, the, um, the farther out the AI will um, stop. So that's basically the distance uh, from the player uh, or from the um, target actor itself, it will stop it. So that's a cool future. Stop on overlap. What is this? Well, if your character bumps into something and you have it ticked, it will stop using this AI move to node. It will not execute any further because it bumped into you. So stop on overlap will essentially just disable the AI move to and will not carry out your, your passing anymore. So now we have three different pins. The first one is the normal execution pin. So it will just run from this side to this side, activate the AI move tool and just move uh, and uh, and just moves on. It just moves on with the logic. It doesn't stop here. The success node, however, will just be triggered if your actor or if your AI blueprint managed to get to the location. If it reached the location, it will trigger the on success pin. And you can carry out like maybe a different um, a different task like go to work or whatever else you uh, come up with. It will just execute it if you reach the location. Now, the on fail function or the on fail execution pin does the opposite of the on success. If your AI is unable to reach the uh, specified goal, it will execute the on fail function and you can execute a different set of logic here, like um, adjust AI location and try again. So these are very useful. Okay, um, yeah, then we can move on to another node called 
Um, simple move to location. Well, simple move to location does exactly the same as this pin here, with our destination. It takes in a vector called goal, but the difference is it needs a controller. Well, I can input a player controller, but we don't need a player controller. What this is referencing to is it wants to have an AI controller. So we get it an uh, AI controller. Now, if you don't didn't specify any AI controller, you can get it by using this node, drag out from this control pin and type in self. It will then get the default AI controller you specified. If you want to change it manually, you can go into the AI BP and specify here an AI controller. And to create an AI controller, you can right click here, select blueprint class and um, click on this arrow button here and type in AI controller and just select it here. Then you, you can call it like um, AI new controller or anything like that. And it will basically be available in our character class, like here. Okay, that's that. Um, it basically just uses a controller. The advantage of this is that you can have a lot of different blueprints or character blueprints which do different things and maybe you have so many different blueprint actors that you can't only use it on your, on your pawns itself all the time. So you can use something more generalized and the generalized um, method is here the controller because we can specify it a shared controller here, like the AI new controller. So it will basically tell every blueprint actor which has this AI new, contr AI new controller selected here. Um, it will, it, <laughs> sorry, I lost this train of thought, but it will basically um, tell every actor which which uses uh, the AI new controller to move because they use uh, because they have the same controller and they can utilize the simple move to location we can also use this simple move to actor does essentially the same thing just that it uses an actor a reference like down here. But now we come to the downside. Simple move to actor doesn't have the unsuccess or unfail pin. And that can be a problem. So the the thing will just run through it and then it will pass or then it will continue with a different chain of logic. So there's another node which combines these and these. And it's called um, move to location or actor. This is the non plus ultra of these two. So first things first, it has an input pin. So we can kickstart it. And we can specify a controller. Yay! We specify a controller. So that it's being applied to every blueprint actor having this controller enabled or selected. Cool. Then we have the goal location. Okay, so we can specify a goal or a vector where we can walk towards. Oh, and we have the goal actor, which is kind of the target actor. 
so we can specify an actor. Cool. Now we have this drop down pin here, this arrow pin. Just click it and you will have the acceptance radius. Cool, we have it down here too. So we can also use an acceptance radius. Now we have to stop on overlap, but it's not a tickable box. It's a, it's a enum. So you can actually select um, an option here. Do we want to stop on overlap? Yes or no? And then we have the, the next enum stage called accept partial path. Also a drop down. Um, what this essentially does is normally um, AI movement will be calculated from the point A to point C or D or any endpoint. So it will move from A to B to C to get to C. But accept partial path can make it easier on the performance because if you enable it, it will not calculate the full path, but just a partial path and say, okay, I want to go to C, but I will need to go to B to come uh, to arrive to C. So I will, uh, it will only calculate the path between A and B and then the path between B and C or from C to B and from B to A. It will never calculate the full path, just a partial path. And this will basically increase your performance and it need, doesn't need to make as much computations. Okay, then we have the two tickable boxes. The first one called use pathfinding. Um, it just basically asks if you were, if you're using a navigation, uh, if you are using the Unreal navigation and navigation mesh, yes. And lock AI logic uh, is basically it will does it will not allow you to change any running AI logic. So that means if someone or if the AI needs to execute a a certain chain, it will execute it as it is and it will not be modified. That's the only thing what this does. Now we have our three pins here. We have our basic execution pin where it just passes in and out without stopping here. And we have something called on request failed. It's essentially the same logic as on our on fail in the AI move to node. And the on move finished is the same as in on success on the AI move to. Okay, but what the hell is async task proxy? To give you a very simplified explanation of it is, well, all your logic, all your game logic will be run on, a, on the main thread of the computer basically on the CPU. And if you have multi-threading support or multi-cores, uh, multi like, uh, like quad-cores or double-cores double or here uh, dual-cores or anything like that, it can normally utilize uh, more threads. And that's called multi-threading. And this just basically runs the well, this basically runs it on the game thread, our AI, AI logic. This, however, can be used, or this async task proxy can be used to run it on a different thread, so it doesn't uh, so it doesn't clutter our main thread. So that can help improve AI performance tremendously because it has a uh, just a thread for itself. And the game, uh, the game thread or the, the, ma the main thread can be freed and uh, we can actually utilize more power or more functionality of our CPU. So that's good, good for multi-threading and such things. That's basically it. I hope I didn't confuse the hell out of you. 
and I wish you a wonderful day, evening, whatever, and I hopefully see you next time. See ya!